got that. I got that down. <laughs> That's the only reason I have a beard. <laughs> <laughs> this should be the. This should be the video. Hi, I'm Chris Roberts. Do you need to move us at all, or now um, are we good? I think you could still slide a little to the right. I, I normally would have had a cut by now, but I was leaving it to last minute before I go. Oh, much better. Well, on a, on a Zoom call, you don't need to really do your hair. At well, least, it's, it's awesome. At least you're wearing pants, but... Well, that's true. That's helpful. <laughs> Hi, I'm Sandy Gardner. And I'm Chris Roberts, and it's good to be back in front of the camera after quite a long hiatus. Yes, it has been quite the hiatus, and we've had a whole bunch of people working from home. How's Seven, that It's been? actually about 720 now. About 720. Uh, yeah, we had to move everybody. We did it in the space of a week, really, uh, of March of last year. And luckily, we were set up in a way that um, makes it easier to do because we do so much collaboration between our different studios and here in L.A. and in Austin and in uh, um, yeah, Wimslow and... Um, in Frankfurt, uh, but you know, still, it's a it's a very different way of working when you're not all getting together in a room together for um, you know collaboration sessions or being able to look over someone's shoulder and look what's on their monitor. Um, so it's been a challenge. It requires a lot more communication uh, and uh, a lot more um, you know Zoom and Teams calls. Uh, so actually, we're quite looking forward to getting uh, back to the office, which uh, you know, whatever fingers crossed, touch wood. Um, is starting to be around the world. I think maybe here in LA we'll, and uh, Austin will be two of the first places we'll start to get back to the office, but hopefully they're shortly afterwards back in the UK and the, the German office because nothing beats working with people and seeing them face to face, and especially on a creative project. So, like, we can still get things done, but one of the issues has been, you know, in terms of how well we close things out, it just takes a little longer when you have to always reach out to someone on a video call to ask about this, and you can't look over a tester's shoulder to see the bug on their screen. And, and uh, if you're just riffing on ideas, it's, it's you know, in person makes a big difference. So I feel like we did a really great job all working remotely, but we weren't as uh, efficient as we could be in closing it down. Whereas when we we're in person, we were, we're a little more on point on that. So I'm looking forward to getting back in the office and also just seeing people. I mean, you know, this, you know, it's nice to roll out of bed and not have to, you know, do much before you, you know, go to work basically. But it's also nice to get out of the house and nice to be around other people. So, uh, so yeah, I think uh, you know, I'm definitely looking back forward. And I know quite a few. Other people uh, in the company are looking forward to getting back and seeing their friends and workmates and uh, you know, carry on with making Star Citizen and Squadron 42. So inquiring minds want to know. We have a few questions. Uh, where's 3.14 at? Okay. Well, it's uh, around the corner. I think probably middle of uh, July is when it will probably release. We're um, in Evercati right now. I think we'll be going to PTU in the near future. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's looks beautiful. I mean, uh, I think we just released a uh, Inside Star Citizen that shows off uh, Arayasan, which is uh, a, you know, beautiful. And it's got the first generation of the cloud tech in that we're still continuing uh, to work on uh, that I think is uh, pretty stunning and it's going to get better as uh, time goes on, uh, which you know, is volumetric clouds. And you know, it's a bit uh, more of a challenge for what we need it for compared to, say, what you would see in Microsoft Flight Sim or some other games because we have to deal with scales that they don't have to deal with. So you know, we can pull all the way back and sort of see the whole planet and have to see the cloud layers in a way that you wouldn't do in, say, Microsoft uh, Flight Sim and have it work as you come all the way in and fly through it. Um, there's still some uh, optimizations to happen and visual improvements and a lot of layering and detail and effects, but already I think it looks beautiful. It's, it's, it basically combines the... The, the rendering and the lighting all together with the atmospheric model. Uh, so we ray march through all the clouds and uh, you know, we'll have an horizon first and then uh, as we go forward, we'll start to roll it out on some of the other planets and then start to work on dynamic weather. But that's down, down the road, but I think it's gonna be um, pretty brilliant. And then Arayasin itself, it's a floating cloud city. I mean, you know, I'm sure I'm not the only sci-fi fan out there that's wanted to step foot on a floating cloud city in person. and. Uh, uh, I, it's you know, beautifully done by uh, you know Ian uh, Leyland and his in, environment uh, teams. Uh, you know they've just done an outstanding job on it, so it looks beautiful. So if you haven't seen it, you can uh, you know check it out in the uh, Inside Star Citizen, uh, or obviously you you know be playing checking out on the PTU or in the game uh, in 
you know, a few weeks, two, three weeks. Sounds good. So this is actually quite a large question, but um, you can keep it short if that's okay. even possible. Yeah. Uh, what's happening with server meshing? Uh, okay, well, the server meshing we're working really hard on. Um, we have put together, a, a, you know, probably our like biggest uh, engineering uh, strike team. Um, so we have a whole bunch of the, uh, you know, engine team that's working on it, as well as the networking team, uh, you know, led by Clive. So on the engineering team, we have Chris Balti leading up server meshing work, and Steve Humphreys is also um, contributing a whole bunch to it. Uh, and uh, we have a whole back end set up that uh, we're doing all in, uh, here internally, but also um, some of the back end services and connections are all being engineered partly uh, up in Montreal as well with uh, Turbulent. There's about 20 people, sort of mostly engineers working on uh, server meshing. So it's probably our biggest sort of overall technical in initiative. Uh, it's super critical. I mean, we've talked about it before. Um, it's sort of the, it's the bit of tech that will allow us to sort of open up uh, you know, well, number of players, but also just sort of help a lot with, uh, you know, sort of our performance issues that we have. Because when we, you know, you play right now in the game, you play in the live build and you're running around Stanton. If everybody's in one location, it's a lot better than if people are spread all over um, the system. And it, typically what happens is as a server stays up for a longer amount of time, People spread out. You know, you'll have people in uh, you know Area 18 and Arcorp. You have people in New Babbage and Microtech. You have people in Lawville. You have people flying around in space. You have people at space stations. And so, the longer the servers get out, the more you got different actors and different entities that are all sort of coming around the, the star system. And as we build out the the, the star system, um, more and more entities and objects get created. So, like you know, we're going to have Arasim coming out with um, 314 and you know, that's, you know, hundreds of thousands of new objects and entities that just come in with that. So if someone goes there, now all of a sudden, that's hundreds of thousands of more entities and objects that the, the server has to simulate. So the key with server meshing is that this is allowing multiple servers to handle different areas inside a star system, uh, and even later stages of it, multiple servers working together to handle even one area, like, uh, you know, a Narasan or a, a New Babbage or something like that. Uh, and allowing players to seamlessly sort of travel around and have be passed uh, under the control of different servers. So the authority passes from one server to another server as so on goes, and that allows us to have a lot, a much larger amount of players in the same space and instance. It's also incredibly critical for transitioning to new star systems. So if you go for a jump point and you go to Pyro, for instance, we need to transfer you from the server that was handling you in, in uh, the Stanton system to the server that will handle you as you enter into Pyro. And so, um, you yeah, know, we've already got the, you know, a lot of the, the core features of server meshing have, because we've been working on for quite a long time. So the, you know, authority transfer, uh, there's a whole bunch of stuff that's already been built. And, you know, we're building out the, the, the back end uh, database, what we call the entity graph that is going to sort of persist and remember the state of every single entity and object in the world. So if you stream out an area, you completely remember the state where everything is, you know, whether you dropped a Coke can in the middle of a forest on a planet. Uh, and that that aspect of it, you know, opens up obviously the, the, the persistence we talked about, which is great, but is also a, a fundamental building block for the server meshing. So we've been really working hard on that. We've, um, you know, we're making really good progress to it. I'm not going to promise any dates because it's it's no the, by far the, the most technically uh, challenging thing. I will say probably by the end of this year, we should hopefully have the proper persistence in there that we that talked about the proper global persistence, which is this sort of streaming entity graph thing that I've just uh, discussed, which is, you know, the new version of what was being called the iCache before, if people are getting confused about that. Uh, but yeah, no, we're working really hard on it. Uh, we're going to have, uh, you know, this year we're not doing a physical citizen con uh, because it just felt a bit too early coming back from uh, the pandemic, you know, whether everyone could travel or not travel. I mean, you know, even now it's, you know, we're going to go to the UK uh, next month and, uh, you know, <laughs> we're all yeah. vaccinated, but still it's uh, going to be a pain and we've got to quarantine and do all this other stuff. So, um, you know, we'll probably do a physical citizen con the following year, but this year we're going to do a virtual one, uh, which we didn't do last year just because, uh, you know, we just, you know, we're just sort of overwhelmed with everyone moving to work from home and everything. Uh, but this year we, we will do one and we're going to, one of the panels is going to be on server meshing. So, to, which will, you know, drill down much more onto the sort of 
details. The technical, technical setup and details. But uh, you know, I'm actually quite looking forward to Virtual Citizen Con, and uh, I think you know, our, you know, everyone making the game loves to share what they're working on with everyone. So. Uh, it's actually quite a morale boost for the teams, uh, you know, and it's nice when you do it in person because you get to meet people in person and, you know, you can see, that, you know, how much people really, you know, love and enjoy the work that, you know, everyone's working on. Uh, but the next best thing is to do a virtual one. So that will be, uh, you know, later this year in, in, in October. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to that and um, hopefully you guys will like it. Yeah. What else are you looking forward to in Star Citizen? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> uh, well, I mean, you know, out, you know, outside of the, you know, the, the, you know, sort of meshing and, and the persistence, um, you know, there's there's some really cool uh, features that are coming online. Actually, the next patch, so 3.15, uh, I believe uh, it uh, hasn't aired just yet. I don't know when we have this thing edited, so it may have come out and are calling all devs or not by the time you see this, or may not have. Uh, but Richard Tyre is going to sort of go over the personal inventory and the medical gameplay, which is a big thing for uh, 3.15. I mean, you know, first of all, uh, you know, the personal inventory is sort of like a, you know, another part of that proper persistence and the world behaving like it's meant to, where you don't have this infinite bag of holding where you have every single armor piece and weapon and cloth and you can access them all and equip all of them. And that's not realistic if you're running around out in uh, you know, the Sahara Desert, you, you know, you don't have access to all the stuff, you just have what you can carry on you. So personal inventory is going to be about what you, what you can carry and, and how you can equip that, whether you have something in a backpack, whether you have something on your suit, and it'll be just limited to, to what you can use and carry. It's also coming with a whole uh, new way to equip your character, because to be honest with you, the, you know, the PMA is horrendous. Uh, it's the most counterintuitive PMA. Uh, uh, yeah, it's a personal management app. It's sort okay. of a, it's like how you currently put clothes on, but it's, it's anyway, it's just, it's, it was, wasn't, we never finished, it wasn't done properly all the years ago, and then we were always like, we're going to fix it up, and I haven't got around to it, but we have a whole new way of equipping and, and doing it, which is much more a sort of paper doll, drag and drop uh, setup, and it's going to be far, far more intuitive, far better. Uh, and will allow you to properly behave like, okay, I'm going to wear my civilian clothes now. Okay, I'm going to take that off and now I'm going to put on my armor. But it will be limited to what you have around you, whether it's in your hab or in your backpack or you're, you're right next to it. And it, it will make your behavior be much more like it would be in real life. So that's a big deal. And the other big deal is the, the medical gameplay, which is really the first stage of the death of a spaceman, which I talked about many, many years ago. And that, uh, you know, involves allowing players the ability to sort of fix up and heal people at varying levels of damage more so than we can do right now with a med pen. Uh, also revive people, um, you know, uh, depending on the severity of injuries. And then it involves, um, you know, also the sort of respawn mechanic. So if you die, um, you know, you, you come, you know, you get brought back to life, um, uh, you know, in a hospital bed, you know, uh, currently we're, we're, we, you know, there's been a slight tweak to a bit of the law because uh, I, I, I saw some people get quite upset about the fact that we mentioned that the respawn uh, in a, you know, a place away away is, you know, now being sort of covered by the fiction of, uh, you know, you've recorded your DNA and you're cloning. But the bottom line is if you got atomized in an explosion on a planet somewhere, how are you finding that body to, to recreate the person? You'd, that just doesn't actually make much logical sense. So the kind of uh, you know, concept we would have is that you can only have so many times you can come back to life, which is basically uh, you've, you've sort of recorded off, you've taken a little bit of your DNA and you can grow a clone, but you can only do that three or four times. It's like having three or four lives. After that, you're, 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 you know, you've degraded too much, your, your DNA is degraded too much and you have to, you're basically permanently dead. And, your, uh, you know, next to kin will sort of take over in the game, which is a sort of death of space mechanic. So it's exactly the same as the death of space mechanic that we had before, which was you had only so many lives before you would go on to have to pass on to your next of kin. Uh, but just scientifically working, you know, you know, I mean, it's all hand waving at this point, but it, it, it just sort of logically sort of makes a bit more sense and also allows players the choice if they don't want to wait around to see if someone can rescue them or find them because it may not be dead if you like die if you like die on a planet or you freeze to death on a planet and no one's around to come get you you know what's you know why you just that's what, not you that's mean not when a fun you game froze experience. our youngest daughter yeah it's not yeah. a fun game experience you may want to just you know respawn back in new babbage um but anyway so it's the first stage of that um i you know uh we delayed it a little bit we we, we could have pushed it to get it into 314 we wanted to hold it to 315 mostly because uh 
it's to do with the hospitals that you respawn in. If we had it in 314, we would only have two locations that would have hospitals, which would have been um, Arias and, and New Babbage. Um, with 315, we also get um, all the space stations mm -hmm. um, and Grim Hex, and the space stations are all, you know, they're in orbit around every one of the planets. So even if we haven't got the Area 18 one or the Lawville one, Maria uh, Pure of Heart, done just yet, they'll be in, I believe, the subsequent release, uh, maybe the 316 one. <clears throat> I'm not sure I'd have to take a look at the release schedule, but now we've got a place that no matter where you are, you can re you you would basically respawn where you, where um, uh, you know your your home base is. Uh, so that was one of the biggest, and just to give them a little bit more time to sort of polish things like the UI and and the experience, and 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 that's kind of one of the focuses that we'll be going forward is uh, you know it's a bit of a sh it's a bit of a shift, but to try to deliver more final or more polished features rather than a very basic version that then you sort of leave for a while before you come back to it. Um, so th those, are, those are big things. Um, the persistence at the, uh, you know, which I mentioned at the end of the year, the proper full persistence of being able to remember where all these items are, which opens up, um, you know, having your own hab that you can store things, your own hanger. So we're going to have persistent hangers and persistent habs too. Uh, and, you know, we, I don't think we put those on the schedule just yet. Um, they will be there shortly after persistence, uh, but that's a big deal because then storage space and where you keep things and where you store things will be huge. And I think that will radically um, change uh, the game experience that people will have. So those those are all you know very cool stuff. We're also working on um, you know the the proper iteration of the cargo stuff. So a whole revised cargo system um, that uh, will be just much more physical and practical and ties into. The, the object and item persistence uh, that I've been talking about. So for the traders out there, it will be a lot, a lot better. And I swear to God, the AI guys are working on some really good, cool stuff. And I'm going <laughs> to determine to make sure that in the, in the uh, game live server, you actually see it. Because really, there's a lot of problems that come because of the low server tick rate. It's really quite uh, frustrating because in reviews, I see you know, um, you know, fun behaviors, a lot more behaviors than they're actually in the PU right now. And uh, it's it's a lot smarter, but you know, you get into the live game like I did with uh, my nine-year-old daughter last night, and there's just a lot of people standing on tables doing nothing. Um, and you got reamed uh, last night. Yeah, I got told off. For, uh, <laughs> you know, I was told I should be, I should be embarrassed to have all my AI standing on tables. Um, but yeah, no, we, we because I mean the AI is actually very powerful, and there's a lot of really um, you know interesting stuff that can be done. It's more a matter of the you know the server. Um, being able to sort of run fast enough to handle that. And then there's some synchronization things that we have to fix. The AI system, like the streaming in and out of stuff, um, you know, the object container streaming, which is both on the server now and on the local, but the server one's the, the problematic one because that has to remember state when it comes in and out. And that's one of the reasons why the persistence that I talked about, the NT graph's really important because you really need to remember all the state properly. And right now we don't remember the state as well as we need to and we do need it for server meshing but that also in that is one of the reasons why you see ai um, problems out there is because they were streamed out in a state like sitting on a, a bench or doing something and then when it gets streamed in it hasn't remembered that state properly and that's how they stand on a table or a t right. post uh, and it's it, and because we're always streaming in and out stuff as you're moving around the world and 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 the ai if we were not streaming stuff in would be um you know, you wouldn't see a lot of the problems you see, but unfortunately we have to stream things in and out because we can't keep everything in memory at the, all the time. So the global persistence will also help a lot with that. So there is, that's a very short answer of what yes, I'm looking forward short. to. <laughs> very short. Um, and you code a lot at night. What are you coding at the moment? Uh, well, I'm, I, I'm, I'm finishing off something that I uh, uh, started, I don't know, last year or something. Uh, mainly, I don't have that much time to, to really um, do all the coding, but I'm, I'm trying to finish up the uh, what we call uh, physical skins. So all our characters in the game, the, f the physics that, that you, you determine whether you collide is th defined, they're on the skeleton. So the skeleton has uh, you know physical joint for like the arm and the hand and the head and the legs, but it's the same skeleton and the same sort of physics geometry for every actor in the game, whether you've got heavy bulky armor on or you're just wearing thin clothes. Uh, and, uh, you know, and actually most games are like this. In fact, a lot of games just have a, a simple capsule that defines a, a, a character. But, you know, we all our characters, you know, when you see a helmet come on or you, they put the armor on or they 
put a jacket or shirt on. That's what's called the skin, which is just geometry that gets uh, mapped to the joints of the skeleton. And then as the joints move around, the geometry deforms with it. Um, and uh, the change is to enable the skins to have physics information embedded with them. So when you bring in the you know the armor torso piece of a heavy armor, it actually brings in physics geometry that will define uh, that basically represents its shape. So as you put different things on, your physics um, shape and profile can change, and that's really important because that means for first of all you know better collision and hit detection. Um, so like you know you could have a case right now where you have a big bulky helmet on, but the physics geometry is just the head size, and so a bullet could go. Uh, it looks like it's hitting the helmet, but it doesn't actually hit the physics geometry. Well, we can change that now so the geometry is the same size as the, the helmet. And also, it makes a big difference for things like uh, physical interactions, like with cloth. So if I've got a, if I walk through like, uh, you know, a, you know, sort of hanging dangly plastic, um, if I've got my proper shape, then it will move out of the way where the, the visual um, render mesh is. And the same for like if I have a cloak on. It, it will now drape over me properly because right now if we put a cloak on the back of a, a character with a normal skeleton and they had a, uh, say, a heavy armor on, the cloak would look like it's going through part of the heavy armor because the actual base skeleton physics geometry is smaller than the heavy skeleton. So, so doing you're, this, you're saying you're making it more specific? Yes, it, it's, it's essentially just making it more accurate. It's allowing for better simulation. It's necessary for like... Uh, cloth and hair simulation so you can make sure that the hair is you know you know not going through what looks like the head because the actual geometry for the the physics geometry of the head is smaller than the actual render right, okay. I so i've uh, so i've been working on that for quite a while it's been sort of something i've been doing in the background um and uh yep yeah, it's almost uh, it's almost ready um uh, to go in and uh, you know probably in not in this release or the next one but the one after that they don't, they don't put my code in right away. We need to make sure it gets tested so it doesn't um, blur everything up. Yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, we've been playing a lot of games in the, in the quarantine that we've had in LA. What have you been, what have, well, we've been playing, they've actually been playing a lot of Valheim. Yeah, well, I think we started off, uh, you know, I have a yeah, uh, uh, nine and a 10 year old daughter, what we do together, um, Sky and Rain, uh, who I think have sort of guest starred on an ISC once or, yeah, once or yeah. twice or something. Not an ISC, an ATV maybe. Um, but uh, yeah, so I, you know, we started out, we were playing uh, Minecraft because uh, uh, our youngest likes Minecraft a lot. And then we were playing some Fall Guys and Fortnite. Uh, so um, Among Us. Yeah, my, uh, Sky is actually very good at Fortnite. We, yeah. we like won four or five yeah, straight games really together. Yeah, she's really good at Fortnite. Uh, I was just following her and she was yeah. doing all the, she had it totally down. It's pretty, in, but Chris pretty is, intimidating Chris, Chris how good Chris is the uh, feisty Valheim player. Well, though. no, yeah. yeah. But anyway, so then we, yeah, more recently we started to play uh, Valheim, uh, you know, at the beginning of this year, uh, which yeah. was, you know, really great. And it's, it actually has some uh, fun sort of, balance and survival light um, uh, style gameplay, which is you know, similar to some of the, the longer term survival light stuff and crafting stuff that we would want to do in, uh, in Star Citizen and some of the stuff we've talked about actually for years. And we, uh, we've also played uh, Star Citizen. Yeah, we played Star we, Citizen. We played last night. Well, <laughs> Chris and Rain played last night. The, again, that sort of, well, as I was mentioning, usability and, and uh, you know, initial user experience, it needs to be uh, far more obvious. And we do have, uh, again, plans for that, uh, but yes, it is quite frustrating to yeah. uh, sometimes, uh, you know, you don't realize you have all the knowledge of how the game works and not if someone hasn't got all the knowledge, it, it um, you know, isn't immediately obvious to them. Uh, yes. Rather, our AI didn't stand on tables, so that and, would be good. And maybe <laughs> maybe the medical tech will fix uh, our daughter froze to death. Well, no, she, resp she responded anyway, but yeah. Oh, so. he froze her. Yeah. Um, what else, what else, what else, what else? And we have some plans for next year. Don't we? Uh, yes. So um, when we uh, get back to the office, uh, which is probably going to be a little later on this year, um, you know, the I'm, you know, we as a family are going to move over to the UK for uh, some time to uh, be with the squadron team to get it finished. Yes. So, so instead of being here in sunny LA, we're going to be in. Um, sunny Manchester. Sunny Manchester. Yeah, I mean, with global warming, everywhere's, <laughs> everywhere's turning into California sunny. anyway. What global warming? Um, 
but uh, yeah, so yeah, so the so uh, whether um, we're we're doing it at the end of this year or the beginning of next year, we're definitely uh, over there. We got some, you know, the UK office. We're actually uh, we're going to be moving to new offices in the UK um, uh, next year, uh, which will be good because we're totally over. You know, our current offices are. Yeah, they're not big enough for how many people we got in Manchester now. Everybody knows uh, that, right? And that, that's not some spoiler alert. Right? No, no, yeah. I mean, okay, we've 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 outgrown it, but we we are we are um, yeah, you know we we've uh, got some new offices that we'll be moving into next year in Germany um, because our lease was up there, and we've we've um, you know had we've got a you know great new space that's very close to where the old one uh, was, and now we're uh, going to be in the uh, you know we're going to it's going to be a very cool place in. In, uh, in in Manchester, and we're going to you know, the new offices will be um, hopefully the one well, hopefully they will be the new flagship for the CIG offices, and we'll have about 400 people there. And, um, and anyway, that'll be fun, and I'll be there with everybody because uh, that's where the core of the squadron team is. And so I'm going over there. I'm going to be there on a day-to-day -day basis with them, uh, getting squadron finished out for you guys. So yeah, this was supposed to be a short five-minute video. <laughs> yes, we made a new. I, I, I tend not to answer um, uh, short with questions. Short questions, yeah. Or I don't I don't give short answers to questions. Let me put it that way. That's true. Thank you very much uh, for you know, everybody all your support um, over the past fifteen months and the past. You know, I thought you were going to say fifteen years for a second. No, not fifteen like, years. Uh, past nine years. Kids are in college. Yeah. I'm getting uh, a wheelchair. Uh, but no, no, it's it's you know it's yeah you know, I think it's there's a it's. It, you know, it's the developers and, and the community. It's like a family. Yes, And, it um, you know, it's, you know, it's, a, it's great to build and it's great to watch people play and have people excited by what is and what will be. And, uh, yeah, I, it's still fun for me all these years on. So, yeah, I'm not saying it's not a lot of work, but it's a lot of fun and we are really building a universe with unbridled ambition, which is, uh, you know, I think... Uh, a privilege to be able to do for all you guys. So thank you very much. It is. Thank you. We will see you in, in the, the verse. verse. There you go. <laughs> I, th I think it's clear that you missed this a little bit.